Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. church family. Morning. How are we doing this morning? I'm Pastor Brad. It's so good to see you all. You ready to worship the Lord? Yes. All right, let's do it. Before we do it, let's pray. Very good. God, we praise you. We thank you for the time we have here just to know you more, to sing of your praise, Lord, to worship you, and to learn your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You can't sing this song without standing up because you can't walk until you're on your two feet. So we're going to walk by faith and sing this song and start our worship together.
and worshiping with us, but really, if you need to sit down, you can sit down. But we love, love, seeing you, love seeing you on your feet and worshiping the Lord and just praising Him for beauty and who He is and what He does for us every day because He is our way. He's a way maker. Good morning, Waterbury Church family. I'm Pastor Brian. I'm Pastor Brian. So glad you chose to be with us today, worshiping together. 
Oh my goodness, what a great day to be together. Tithes and offerings, there's a box in the back line. You can make a donation in the box or uh, through the church website or on your bulletin, the QR code. You can scan that and make a donation there as we continue to minister to our community. Uh, just a great things going on, as you can tell. Sunday School for All Ages, Sunday morning at 9.30. Uh, pick a ball um, on Monday nights at 6 o'clock. You can join us for that. That's a great time to be together. Uh, before I go any farther, we had a men's breakfast yesterday. Uh, it was a great time together. It was a great time. And the food was even really good. Uh, Kelly, did you make the gravy or did Rich you make it? Did it with maple love? Oh my goodness. Amazing. Biscuits and gravy were amazing, and uh, corned beef hash, and everything but fresh fruit. But uh, other than that, it was really good. We were promised fresh fruit, but it didn't come. Anyways, uh, I assume all the guys, uh, Randy reminded me this morning, all the guys have their frog in their pocket. And if you don't have your frog in your pocket, you don't know what I'm talking about. In your mailbox, the rest of you guys that missed uh, Bible study, there is a white sheet with a frog tape to it and a, a, uh, a YouTube file. Go watch the video. It's like 30 minutes long. Go watch the video. It will explain the frog that you should have in your pocket. So watch the video. Just a great men's uh, time together. Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, kids in the lower level. Pastor Brad's got stuff for the youth. Uh, we're doing the book of Ephesians in the White House. Join us 630. Uh, great things going on. Uh, next Sunday night, uh, Michigan Singers will be here. See Pastor Brad if you have any questions about that. Uh, Somerset Beach Camp, right around the corner. Uh, grab a sheet if you got kids in high school or junior high or elementary school. Grab a sheet, get the dates, get the uh, registered for camp ahead of time. You can save some money to get registered up, uh, before the middle of May. Let's do our memory verse together. You know how much persecution and suffering I have endured. You know all about how I was persecuted in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, but the Lord rescued me from all of it. Yes, and everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. 2 Timothy 3, 11, 12. Holiness.
to trust in you, depend upon your word, call upon you. If I never had a problem, I'd never know that you could solve it. Father, there's so many things that we go through in life, and we just need you to walk with us day in and day out. And Father, I pray that uh, for those that are going through sickness and illness and treatments and uh, all kinds of things of life, Father, I pray that you be with each one of them. Uh, thank you that uh, Sherry's with us today after almost cutting her thumb off last week, and uh, Adam's with us today, and he's out of the hospital, and Don's facing surgery coming up, and we pray for Barb with the procedures that's going on in her life, and Father, we just pray for each one, and Jill's with us today after having kidney stones, and Father, just amazing how you walk with us through many trials and struggles of life. So Father, we are grateful, thankful that we can trust in you through it all, through all the things that we face in life. And because of that, Father, we can have peace knowing that you are the answer. You are the one that we turn to. You are the one that comes alongside of us, carries us when we're hurting and broken and wounded. And you give us peace like only you can give. Thank you, Father, for your sweet peace that you give to us every day of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. The children can be dismissed. Go ahead. Go ahead. chapter 14 in just a minute. Let's say our uh, phrase together. A disciple of Jesus is a learner, learning to walk like Jesus, walk like Jesus, live like Jesus, be like Jesus to others. Amen. We just lived through Easter, the death of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus. Uh, first of the year we started off in the book of Acts. Jesus was with the disciples for about 40 days, went to heaven, they prayed, Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came, filled them, thousands were saved, amazing things happened, and we just walked through the book of Acts, and so we're going to continue walking through that. Remember that Saul was going around killing Christians, and he held the coats as they stoned Stephen. In Acts 9, where Saul... Is, has this encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus. He's blinded for three days, and Ananias comes alongside of him, and, and Saul's name gets changed to Paul, and he becomes a new person in Christ. And uh, Acts 10 through 11, Peter shares the gospel, and he has a vision about unclean things coming down from heaven, and God says, everything's going to be clean because of me, and he gets to preach to the Gentiles, and he gets called on the carpet because he preaches to the Gentiles, and he explains with his vision and they understand and the church spreads even more. James is killed, Acts chapter 12, and Peter is arrested. He's getting ready to be killed the next day and the church is praying and the angel shows up and walks him out of prison and sets him free. Uh, chapter uh, 13, Paul and Barnabas go on their first missionary journey led by the Holy Spirit. So we're going to pick up in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 14, verse 1. Uh, at Iconium, uh, Paul and Barnabas went, as usual, to the Jewish synagogue. Uh, there they spoke so effect effectively that great numbers of Jews and Greeks believed. 
But the Jews who refused to believe stirred up the other Gentiles and poisoned their minds. There's a phrase you want to underline, poisoned their minds against their brother. Verse 3, so Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there spreading the Boldly for the speaking boldly for the Lord, who confirmed the message of His grace by enabling them to perform signs and miracles, enabling them to do miracles, miracles. And the people of the city were divided. Some side with the Jews and others with the apostles, but they plotted a foot among both Jews and Gentiles, or Gentiles and Jews. Uh, together with their leaders to mistreat them and stone them. But they found out about it and they fled to the surrounding cities. And there they preached, continued to preach the gospel. You ever notice that when you're doing things for God, bad things happen? You ever notice that when you're following God's will, crazy things happen, like unbelievable things happen. You ever think about that? And I think that's one of Satan's best tricks along the way. He likes stirring stuff up, right? He likes coming alongside and stirring stuff up. You know, and he comes alongside and he stirs stuff up. stuff up. And here it is. We see it in Acts 14. Uh, Paul and Barnabas are preaching, performing wonderful signs, and great things are happening. And they start stirring stuff up. They stir stuff up. And Satan likes to stir stuff up like our past sins. Like, hey, remember when you did that? Uh, so he likes to, the past hurt. Remember that person? They really hurt you last time. Don't trust them. Uh, memories from our past or maybe it's some guilt or shame that he stirs up inside of you and you have this feeling like, oh no. And he stirs up. Maybe there's gossip about you or he stirs up doubt about you. You start doubting yourself. Like, am I really saved? Do I really love Jesus? And he stirs up stuff. And if that doesn't work, then he comes along, he starts stirring stuff up in your family, right? With your kids, your work, at school, he stirs stuff up. Things start to happen, things start to break. I can't believe that happened in your neighborhood, all that kind of stuff. Paul and Barnabas were right in the center of God's will. They, if you remember from Acts 13, they laid hands on them and they sent them out and they're preaching the gospel and they're telling people about Jesus. They're doing exactly what God called them to do. And Satan's stirring stuff up. Stirring stuff up. Unbelievable. They're filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, they're talking about the resurrection. Of, and, they, and verse 3 is really where God's stamp of approval is on their ministry. He's given them the ability to do wonderful things and, and wonderful acts and, and you know, wonders and miracles. And in another translation says that God collaborated with their work by doing miracles and wonders. God confirms he's a, they're exactly where God called them. You're right at the right spot. God says, you're right there. You have the ability to do this incredible stuff. As the apostles stayed any longer, they preached boldly, and the Lord proved their message, gave word to their message. Paul and Barnabas were preaching boldly, preaching what God called them to do. They were doing wonderful acts. But not everyone believed. Not everyone believed, the scripture says. They all didn't believe. They all didn't agree with. Even after seeing miracles and signs and wonders, they didn't believe. Who does that sound like? Even when Jesus was here, he did miracles and signs and everyone didn't believe. The, the Jewish leaders didn't believe. Not even, they didn't believe Jesus when he did those things as well. I know there's been a time in my life that I thought, man, it'd be so great if I could do miracles and I could lay hands on people and people get healed. Or when I was in Brazil on a mission trip, I prayed earnestly that God would give me the ability to preach in Portuguese so people could understand. So I didn't have to have an interpreter. I can't even preach in English at times. <laughs> but I know that people's lives have been changed because of what God is doing. It's not Pastor Brian, it's not Paul and Barnabas, it, it's, it's the Holy Spirit working. I'm not sure I can handle a ministry of that type of magnitude. I do know I'm called to preach the word of God and to share 
truth and raise the standard and set the bar and, and do those things. So today, let's say that this is where you're at in your spiritual walk. Here's where you're at today, right here. I want you to take one step today. I want you to take one step closer to God. I want you to take one step closer to holiness today. One step. One step. And if each day we can take one step towards God, our lives, our world would change. One step. So that, there's my sermon for the day. I want you to take one step with me, okay? One step. If you get mad at Pastor Brian, call me tomorrow. Or go to voicemail. <laughs> Kim will check it on Tuesday or Thursday next week. Come see me. Lana will be in the food pantry. If you're here, and I want you to be here, God wants you to be here. Just take one step with me today. I might ask you to just take one step, okay? One step. See, the Holy Spirit does the heavy lifting when it comes to conviction. Pastor Brian can wave, I should have had a flag. Pastor Brian can wave the flag, don't do that, don't do that, do this, don't do that, you know, read your word, follow the Bible. I can wave the flag all I want, but it's the Holy Spirit that works in your heart and lives to get you holiness. Okay. I'm going to wave the flag today. Okay. And it's going to get quiet in here. And that's okay. I, I'm comfortable with the quietness. The Holy Spirit does such a better job at pointing out sin in my life and in your life than I can ever do. I'm called to preach the Word of God. That's my calling. That's my commitment to you as well. Paul and Barnabas were preaching boldly the truth of God. The miracles, the, the death on the cross, the resurrection. They were telling them the truth. And many doubted. And many doubted. And because they doubted, they stirred up, Satan stirred up stuff about them. And they came after him. They plotted to kill them. And we'll read in just a minute in Acts, uh, the next chapter later on in 14, where they stoned him, and they thought he was dead. Left him for dead. So they're in the middle of doing God's will, and they get persecuted. Let me say this clear with love as possible. When we're in the middle of doing God's willing, God's will, there will be days of persecution. There will be pain and suffering. You just have to understand I would rather face pain and suffering for doing what God's called me to do than doing something stupid. <laughs> because we've all been there and done that, right? So we will face persecution. We will face pain. We will face suffering. We will face some of those things along the way. Remember what Paul wrote in Timothy? Um, I think it's our verse that we did together. Uh, you know how much persecution and suffering I've endured. Uh, through all our time together, but God, the Lord, rescued me from all of it. Yes, and everyone who wants to live a godly life, that's what we're called to do, a godly life, a holiness life, God health life, in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution, will face persecution along the way. So we have to understand that. So don't be surprised, don't be naive, don't be... When things happen, people are going to misunderstand you. They're going to criticize you. They're going to take shots at you. All kinds of things are going to happen because of the way that you live, by what you choose to do, uh, the way, the standard that you set for your life, the holiness that God's calling you to. People are going to mock you, say things about you, laugh at you, criticize you, whatever the case may be. Uh, and so you will face that. So the standard is a holy life. That's what God calls us to do, right? Okay. So Paul and Barnabas are preaching the word of God boldly, 
and they come against them and they stir up all kinds of stuff about them and say all those things about them uh, because they're doing exactly what God's called them to do. Okay? Let's look at what the world says is okay and what God's standard is. Okay? Because we have to have a standard, a set of standards, right? We have to have a, and I have some measuring stuff, you know, I have three rulers that are all 12 inches long, but they're all different size. <laughs> I have two tape measures that measure differently. Right. So what standard do we use? I have the world standard here, and I have God's standard here, okay? So let's just try a couple and see what happens. The world says, I can do anything I want on Sunday, it's just another day. God's word says, it's a holy day set aside for worship, for me. The world says, I can listen to any kind of music, no matter what kind of language is in it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't affect me. The word says, thy word I've hid in my heart that I might not sin against you, Father. The world says, I can smoke dope and drugs and do anything I want to. It's my body. The word says that my body is a temple of the living God. We are to honor God with our body. If you want any of these references, call me tomorrow. I can give them to you. The world says I can have sex before marriage. It's okay. Everyone's doing it. The word says that the marriage bed is to be holy. The world says I can miss church. God's word says, encourage one another to meet together in the house of the Lord. The world says, I can look at porn. It's all right. It doesn't affect anybody. It's, it's no big deal. The, the word of God says that if we look at a woman with lust in her eyes, we've committed adultery. The world says, God says. We okay? The world says, we are to please people. People are supposed to like you. God's word says we're to please him. Paul and Barnabas were preaching the word of God in the center of God's will. He got stoned. The world says, I can have this attitude, I can do anything. God's word says, I have to trust in him. It's by his power, by his might. The world says, believe in yourself. The word says, believe in God. The world says, a little lie is not a big deal. God's word says, don't bear false witness. The world says, God says. The world says, it's okay to hate those people that don't like you. Hate them. The word says, Jesus said, if you hate your brother or sister, it's like committing murder, right? Isn't that what the word says? The world says, get even. Take revenge into your own hands. They, you deserve it. The word says, love your enemies. Pray for those that persecute you. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. He'll take care of it. The world says, I can cheat on my taxes, just a couple fudge numbers. The word of God says that we are to submit to the authorities. The world says, 
God says. The world says you can marry anybody, any kind of sex, whatever, it doesn't matter. You know, God's word says the marriage is between a man and a woman. The world says that you, you can drink as long as you don't get drunk and drive and get caught. God's standard says don't be drunk with wine. The world says, the world says that you can kill a fetus until it takes a breath and then you can't. God's word says, I knew you when you were in your mother's womb before you took your first breath. The world, the world says, God says, the world says it's about me and making me happy. God Sanders says, no, I want to make you holy. I want to make you holy. That's what God wants. It's class participation time. I hope you have a bulletin, something to write on. If not, grab it in both out there. Write down some areas. I had down one area, but I thought that was too, too, too few. Write down some areas of your life that you have slipped into the world thinking that this is okay and compromise what God's word says. Pull out a piece of paper. If you need a pencil, I got an extra pencil here. Anybody need a pencil or a pen? It's all right. Everybody needs a paper and pen. I can get extra ones if you need them. Write down some areas where, where you have slipped, where you have allowed the world's standard to become your standard. Those areas that you like, oh man, I shouldn't do that. But we slide into that. Versus where God is saying, this is where this is where I want you to be. Again, I want you to take one step towards holiness today. One step. And, and everybody's different. I understand that. We're, the things that I'm struggling with are different than the things you're struggling with. Or you're, or what, just take that step. Everybody got something? One area where you can take a step closer to holiness. One area. I, don't, I want everyone to have something. Write it down. One step closer. Let's go back to Acts 14 for a minute. The Jews refused to believe and they stirred up other Gentiles and poisoned their minds against their brothers. Acts 14, verse 2. Acts 13, verse 50. Then the Jews stirred up the influence of religious women and leaders of the city and they incited a riot against Paul and Barnabas and ran them out of town. Acts 14, verse 19. And some of the Jews arrived at Antioch, won the crowd over to them. They stoned Paul and dragged him out of town thinking he was dead. But after the disciples gathered around him, he got up and went back into the city. The next day, him and Barnabas left for the brief. They stone him, they think he's dead, and they leave. And some disciples, some others, gather around him. Just a side note, you write this inside of your Bible. Do you have anybody who would pick you up after you've been beaten down? Do you have some of those friends around you that love you enough that would go with you and pick you up? Just a side note. Paul and Barnabas faced many trials, persecutions, sufferings for preaching the good news of Jesus. Most of us you know what we would do if this happened to us? If they could drag us out, stoned us, left us for dead, most of us would do what? Throw in the towel and quit. God, I thought you told me this is what you wanted me to do. God, this is your fault. 
God, how in the world could you let this happen to me? I am in the center of your will, doing exactly what you called me to do, preaching preaching these things exactly as he's called me to do. And God, this is your fault. And we would start blaming God for what's going on, right? We would throw in the towel and start blaming God. I'm out here telling people about Jesus, uh, performing miracles, confirming the message is yours and everything. And so we translate it this way. I'm doing the things that you called me to do, God, and I'm still facing persecution. God, I'm doing just what you called me to do, and people are laughing at me and making fun about me and lying about me. Let me break it down for you another different way. God, I took my family to church. I even read the Bible together, and my kids are acting up more than ever before. God, I went to Sunday school last year, and guess what? My marriage is in shambles. God, I'm doing exactly what you called me to do, and my life's a mess. That's all. Let's just interpret it. Paul and Barnabas are doing exactly what God's called me to do. Here's another way of interpreting it. God, I told my girlfriend that I'm dating. I can't move in with her until we get married. And because it's the right thing to do, it's what God's called me to do. And guess what? She loved, she left me. She dumped me. See, when we do the right thing, the world is going to push back. The world's going to push back. And that's what happened to Paul and Barnabas. The world pushed back. But they didn't stop. Uh, let me try another one. Uh, God, you told, I went to my coach and said, hey coach, I can't practice on Sunday morning because I got church and I want to be in church. And because I told my coach that, I'm not starting now. Matter of fact, I got kicked off the team. See, these are places where we say, God, it's your fault. I raised the standard in my life. I took a step towards holiness. And these things happen against me. And so we want to blame God. It's your fault, God. Doing God's will will bring persecution and suffering into our lives. But we'll grow through it. We'll get through it. If I never, the song we sang, if I never faced a problem, I never know what God can do. I never would have known how much he can walk with me and encourage me and walk every day of my life. James, we studied it in our Wednesday night class a couple weeks ago. I consider it pure joy, my brothers, when you face trials of any kind. What? Because the testing of our faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work that I might be mature, complete, not lacking anything, that I might be towards holiness, that I would take a step towards holiness. Because that's where God's called us to go. Do you ever make a New Year's resolution where you, I'm going to go to the gym and work out every day for the next year? Do you ever make a New Year's resolution? I've done that before. Or you're like, I'm, I'm going to get serious about weightlifting. I'm going to get serious about this. So you go to the gym and you work out. Man, oh man, you just pump iron. You do chest. You do curls. You do a thousand curls, you know. You just feel so good. Man, I'm so good. I feel so strong. And the next day, I'd really like a cup of coffee. <laughs> the next day you can't even raise your arms because it hurts so bad, right? <clears throat> See, when you take a step forward, there's going to be pain and some suffering along the way. But after a couple of days, those muscles start feeling better and you start to get stronger. And you can take another step and another step. God wants to do the heavy lifting in your life. Yes, we'll face trials, persecution, struggles, and pain in life. Yes. But the goal is holiness. And that's what he's calling us to. So today, the question is, what standard do we have? Which one of these is right? What are you 
use for your standard. What the world says, if it's off just a little bit, will it really matter? I was like my gun in with Glenn last year, was it Glenn last year? It was off just a little bit. But by the time it got down target, it was off. How far, Glenn? Well, matter of fact, I missed the whole deer, right? I missed the whole deer. Let's just tell them the way it is. I missed the whole deer. Is that far off? <laughs> but it was off just a little bit. Is this your standard? Is this it? Is this what you're setting your standard to? Or is it the world? Satan has a way of stirring stuff up in our lives and keeping us from doing what he's called us to do. God is calling us to holiness. Let's pray. Father, your Holy Spirit does such a better job than I ever could dream or imagine about conviction, about sin, about things that we have compromised in our life. And I pray that we would take a step towards holiness today. That each one of us have written down or made a note of something in our lives where we have compromised and we need to take a step towards holiness today. Father, forgive us for the times that we gave in to the world, for the times that the pressure came and persecution came and we folded like a cheap folding table. And we blamed you as your fault. I pray that we'd be like Paul and Barnabas. They kept on preaching the word. They kept on telling about Jesus. They encouraged one another and lifted each other up. Father, help us not to water down your message, your truth. Yes, it's sharper than a two-edged sword, and it's going to cut deep into our lives at times. Father, help us to respond to you. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, could you just... Raise your hand if there's something in your life that you said, hey, I've been compromising and I need to take a step forward. Thank you. Thank you for being honest. Thank you. I need to take one more step towards holiness. Thank you. Thank you. Father, you've seen the hands. You know the decisions and the lives. I pray, Father, that you would give them the boldness and the courage to take that step towards holiness today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The worship team is going to come and sing us out with the song Holiness. We'll stand together and sing this. Holiness is what we're called to. Holiness is what we long for. Holiness. Thanks for worshiping with us today. Barry?